Good morning. Welcome to this week's online service from Beaconloft Baptist Church here in Gateshead on Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. May this truth resound not only in our hearts this morning, but touch the lives of all joining us today and forever be the truth of which we speak. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray together. Lord God, you are a God of love, and we come to you on this resurrection morning with assurance of hope and of life eternal. We thank you for the resurrection of Jesus and a new day which he brings, a day in which death has been defeated. We thank you for his resurrection to new life. We thank you that now we have Jesus with us. We thank you for Jesus Christ our Saviour. We thank you that Jesus willingly endured the suffering and death on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus loved us so much that he endured the cross for our salvation and that in the midst of the pain and humiliation of the cross, he forgave those who persecuted him and prayed for them. This day we give you thanks for Jesus and all that he accomplished, his rule over all things and his presence in the world. 
his teaching and example, the forgiveness and salvation he obtained for us. We thank you for the wonderful gift of life. We were given the eternal gift to us, for the great and mysterious opportunity of life, its joys and responsibilities, its experience and opportunities for the life of the Spirit within us, for the earth and the wonder of its life, for the making of us to be a part of it all, we give you thanks. We thank you for the many things you give us, good health and daily food, the shelter and care of our homes, and love and loyalty of our friends. Lord, we thank you not only with our lips, but in and through our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to lift your voices with us as we sing this morning. Come, people of the risen King, who delight to bring Him praise. Come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of of mercy reach to gather children in. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ.
church of Christ rejoice So Early in the morning, when it was barely light, they set off. Those faithful women who had stood at the foot of the cross, seen him breathe his last, watched as he was laid hastily in the tomb. Now with heavy hearts and heavy tread, they set off with their spices and clean linen sheets to do that which women always do, tending the dead, shrouding them decently with spices before burial. There'd been no time to do it on the Friday, then it had been the Sabbath, but now on the Sunday morning they set off for their burdensome work. Under different circumstances, those same women would have tended the newborn, wrapping them too in clean white linen, using different spices for the delicate baby skin, but swaddling the newborn just as they now prepared to shroud the dead. These women were used to the endings and beginnings of life, were used to being there to watch life come and go, used to being present at births and deaths. So they set off in the half light with their burdens this time expecting to attend a death, a life over. Not to witness a birth, the coming of new life. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. I will rise in the morning to see my Saviour's tomb Knowing death could not hold you there 
the stone meant to hide you was rolled away revealing the triumph of my lord the tomb laid bare my heart cries hallelujah hallelujah jesus has won sin has fled my heart cries hallelujah hallelujah behold my savior's risen from the dead i have seen the risen savior with wounds upon his hands the marks of death he gained a calvary i believe The grave couldn't keep you. The tables have been turned. Behold, my Savior's risen from the dead. Oh, my heart cries hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus has won, sin has fled. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Dear Lord, on this Easter Sunday, we thank you for the hope we have in you and for the promise that you make all things new. We remember with thankfulness that Jesus suffered and was crucified for our sins and then raised from the grave. His death and resurrection gave us forgiveness and freedom. We now have new life and renewed hope. We are privileged to be your children. Father, we are blessed by your strength and surrounded by your everlasting love. We thank you for being our saviour, redeemer and friend and are grateful for the relationship we have with you. We ask you to strengthen us in our faith. Shine your light in us, through us and over us. And may we make a difference in this world and bring glory to you. Father, help us to live lives that honour you, having thankful hearts, eyes that see needs around us, 
hands which help and support others, feet that walk in your grace, and mouths to share the good news to others in our world. Once again we thank you for the good news of Easter and the wonder of Jesus' death and resurrection. To you be glory and honour on this resurrection day and evermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Christine. Charles Gabriel grew up on an Iowa farm in America. He learned music by playing a reed organ at home. During his lifetime, he became one of the most prolific composers of gospel songs of his day. He was credited with writing more than 7,000 gospel songs. One of those was written in 1905, I Stand Amazed, based on these verses from Luke's Gospel. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. The second verse in this particular hymn recreates this scene. For me it was in the garden. He prayed, not my will, but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. The response in the chorus is one of awe. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me.
Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Worship this Easter Sunday. What is your story? You know, everyone has a story, and everyone has had a major experience that has been life-changing for them. I'd like you to think about that just now, maybe about a moment or a sequence of events that have changed your life forever. Now try to recall the emotion, the feelings that you had in that part of you that no one has ever really reached. Now, depending on the memory, this might be an incredibly positive experience for you. Or it might have been one of those events that has torn you apart. You know, the journey that we travel ultimately has a purpose. And we have the freedom on that journey to make choices good or bad. But problems arise when we make choices and then write checks of commitment that our body or our spirit just can't cash. Here's the source of disappointment in ourselves and a sense of failure that causes us to perform a, a kind of post-mortem so that we become lost in a maze of conflicting feelings, emotions and desires. Now at this point, what we do is we create a coping me mechanism so that we can push our failure to the back of our minds and then somehow we bury the elephant in the room and actually, by distracting ourselves, do find those moments when we forget that it's there. But then, just when we think we've got it all sorted out, the burial ground begins to erupt. And there it is in all its dominating splendour to haunt us and take us on that spiral of cover-up once again. This reality is as old as the day is long. And it's not unique to us as an individual. Sure, our circumstances might differ and our coping mechanisms will be our own. But the journey of life, making promises, facing failure and seeing potential, well, that's just common to everyone. You know, surrounded by friends, Jesus affirmed the weak, challenged the strong, healed the sick, he even raised the dead to life. He spoke reassuring words of God's love for the human race. And those who were there, they really understood that there was something special going on. It was one of those moments in life that was life-changing. This cause was worth committing to. The problem was they couldn't get over themselves. They were just like us. They were the barrier to knowing God themselves. Absorbed with life and their own circumstances, they didn't listen to Jesus' words. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his own soul? Peter's story is ours. You're the Christ. He asked us who he said he was. That's what he said. You're the Christ. You know, he rode a donkey into Jerusalem, right? People laying down a procession of palm leaves for the one we'd all been waiting for. It was like one of those pinch me moments. Then Passover came. Me and the boys are tucking into the flatbread and Jesus just comes out with it. One of you dipping bread in the balsamic is going to turn me in, he said. Then he takes the bread, tears and shares it. What are you waiting for? Tuck in, he said. This is my body, broken, beaten, bruised, for you. Then he gives thanks and passes round the red. Drink up, he said. This is my blood, poured out for plenty. A bit later... We're up the Mount of Olives with Jesus. You know, when push comes to shove, you're all gonna bail on me, he said. No chance, I said. The rest of the might, I'm not going anywhere, I said. Count on it, he said. Before the night's over, you'll swear blind you don't even know me, he said. On my life, I'll never deny you. I'll die for you, I said. It all happened so fast. One minute. We're with Jesus as he's praying up Gethsemane and we're sparked out unconscious the next. They've got Jesus in handcuffs. And all they can remember is what he said. That we'll bail on him. That we'll deny him. That I'll deny him. I'm not having it, I thought. He's got it wrong, I thought. So I drew out my sword. I gripped my teeth and I let rip. I cut this guy's ear clean off. Come on, let's have it. Enough, Jesus said. As he just goes quietly and I just legged it. I tailed him till we ended up at the chief priest's place. Me, in the courtyard, outside by the fire, him, inside, 
stand in trial. <laughs> trial. Witnesses fabricating fake news, trying to pin something on Jesus that would land a death penalty. You got nothing to say, they said. No defence, they said. Go to him, give it to us straight. Are you the Christ, they said. I am, he said. Enough said. As the guards struck him, stripped him and spat on him. Bang! Go on! Prophesy you landed that right up, they said. Meantime, I'm warming my hands by the fire, trying to keep a low profile. Although there's only so much blending in you can do when you're watching your best mate and mentor get the living daylights kicked out of him. Hang about. I know you, the servant girl said. Must have one of those faces, I said. No, you're a... One of his lot from Nazareth, she said. Don't know what you're talking about, love, I said. I made a beeline for the exit, but now she's got a captive audience, eh? Guess who he's friends with, she said. Think she's had a bit too much of the Merlot, I said, but they won't let it go. I could see them eyeballing me, working it out in their head. Come on, mate. If you're not from Galilee, I'll eat my own sandal. On my mother's life, I've not even met the guy! The cockle crows a second time. And that's when I see him. Tossed around like a tear and share flatbread. Broken. Beaten. Bruised. Just like he said. And with a bottle's worth of red blood smeared across his face, he looks at me. He looks right at me, right into the depths of me. And all I can remember is what I said. I'll never deny you. I'll die for you. Three times you'll deny me, Pete, he said. And I just broke down and wept. There are moments when we've dropped a clangor and when we really are self-conscious. In the case of a relationship failure, seeing the other party, it evokes all kinds of emotions. Sometimes there's relief because an opportunity has arisen to right the wrong. This stems from our deep-seated desire to be at peace and have no conflict in our life. Now, this is a tough one because it re requires of us a vulnerability. It means swallowing our pride and dealing with the fear of facing up to our responsibilities. And that might mean rejection. Now we know that rejection really hurts, but it can also inflict, inflict damage on our psychological well-being too. And that goes beyond our emotional pain. Now some have said that in our hunter-gatherer past, being ostracised from our tribe was akin to a death sentence as we were unlikely to survive for in a, alone very long. So evolutionary psychologists, they assume that the brain developed an early warning system to alert us when we were at risk of being out of favour. Now whether we accept this or not, we have to acknowledge that reliving bad experiences still has the capacity to cause us pain. And it's because we have a fundamental need to belong when things go wrong that we feel dislocated, which in turn adds to the emotional pain that we experience. To reconnect and re-establish stable relationships brings healing to us, which then brings a promise of peace. Peter is learning as his journey continues. Three pounds at the door, our hearts pounding out of our chest. They found a hiding spot. Get down, shut up! We wait for the inevitable. Nothing. False alarm. Three more pounds at the door. Let me in quick, she said. We opened the door and bolted back shut. Mary, what are you doing? You're trying to get us killed, we said. He's, he's, he's gone, she said. What do you mean he's gone? I didn't stick around for the answer. I took them both off the door and I just bolted. Sprint into the tomb with a million thoughts sprinting through my head. John flies past and beats me there. I catch up and John's just standing there, gobsmacked. The stone was rolled over. I stoop into the place where Jesus' lifeless body lay, just 
I was before and now it's empty by the claws he was buried in folded up tidy it was empty we look at each other speechless I mean could it has he done the impossible the R word we couldn't even bring ourselves to say it or we just being played I thought some kind of sick joke some trap set by the Romans rabbis Pilot, take your pick. We didn't hang around long enough to find out. We legged it back to the hiding spot. The others opened the door and bolted it back shut. And that's just before it happened. You know, the first time. Should have seen our faces. I jumped out of my skin. We told Thomas he wasn't buying it. So a week later, it happened again. Should have seen his face. You'd think we'd known better a third time, right? After things settled down, we go back home to Galilee. So we're down Tiberia Sea, right? There's me, Nate, Tom, James, John, the Zebedee boys. It's pitch black. We're hundred yards out, fishermen right in our sweet spot, trying to make a catch, staying in abysmally. Anyway, day's breaking and there's randomer is wandering the shore. Any luck, boys, he said. Not a single sardine, we said. Try the other side of the boat, he said. So we cast our nets the other side of the boat. Now, what do you know? So many fish, not even matter tax could count them. It's him, said John. Well, what are we doing faffing about with all this fish, I thought. I dive straight in, splash, head down, swim to shore. I get there and he's lit up this barbie. How'd you get on with the catch? Any joy, he said. Bring them over here, plenty of room, he said. I look round and see the boys dragging out of the water what must have been the biggest catch I'd ever seen. Anyone for breakfast, he said. So there we were. Stuffing our faces with fish sarnies, just staring at him. We knew it was him, but no one dared ask. After breakfast, he asked me if I loved him three times. Yes, Lord, I said. As it brought to mind the three times I flat out denied him. Look after my sheep, he said. You got it, Lord, I said. He had, you know, done the impossible risen. One time he asked us who he said he was. You're the Christ, I said. The anointed one. The one we'd all been waiting for. The hand-picked rescuer. Still, I didn't see it coming. Not the way it played out. But it was always part of the plan. He came to bear our brokenness to his breaking point. From fully perfect to fully broken, to two days later, fully fixed, so we can be forever fixed in him. Like I said, he'd done the impossible, risen, and there's no denying it. That changes everything. So what will we do with our broken lives? Easter shows us that our difficulties in life are revealed through willful behaviour, through broken relationships and bad decisions stemming from our spiritual distance from God. He's not rejected us, but we've rejected him and the offer of eternal life paid for by Jesus on Good Friday and sealed by him on the resurrection day. So take a moment, consider your life. Picture him in your minds as he beckons to you and says, come on, follow me. Every blessing.
Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, all for sinners slain. Thank you. So we thank you, Lord, that we can praise and thank you afresh on this resurrection morning. Easter speaking of new life and new hope. And today it it lifts our spirits so we can come with full hearts to bring our cares and concerns before you. We thank you that uh, Jim Barris is is home and we pray that uh, his family will uh, and him will work together uh, to see improvement as much as possible in his mobility. So be with that family, Lord. We thank you too that Mary Snooks is making progress at home and and we pray that you would give her and Joe the rest they need and the strength to aid recovery. We again pray for Ben and Val, Lord, and, and we ask you to uh, uh, just surround this couple with your love and give Ben, particularly Ben, physical strength as he balances the side effects of his treatment. We bring before you Jackie and Alan. This is Bob and Joan and Carol's neighbours. Jackie's really quite unwell, um, but she's now home. So we pray that you would be with her and her family. Give them the strength they need to cope with the days ahead. But most of all, give them your peace. And Bob and Joan's uh, in-law, Mick, has tough times ahead too. So we pray that you would be with him and his family as they uh, begin uh, treatment. 
Lord, we pray for the friends who uh, are on their own just now, uh, those in, in church fellowships and our own fellowship. We, we ask that you'd be a companion to them and bless them. And we also pray for our friends who uh, are listening uh, in different parts of the country. We ask an Easter blessing on them all. And we pray, Lord, that the joy of Easter may not fade with the day, but remain in our hearts, constantly spurring us on and blessing our hearts and giving us hope. We thank you that your love and sacrifice make us feel so grateful, uh, and yet we don't deserve any of it, but we are indebted, Lord, to you and to your grace and to your faithfulness. Uh, And this isn't just at Easter, this is on a daily basis. So we thank you for all of that. And we pray that we might be blessed and you might be glorified because we ask it in your name. Amen. Thanks, Irene. Also, thanks to Christine, Ben, Pastor Bob, plus Sue Thompson, Di Woolridge and the Bible Society for the Dramas. Our final hymn is a modern take on a traditional hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, performed by our friends from the Village Chapel. Thanks again for joining us. If you'd like to get in touch, Bob's email address is on the screen. Let me lead us now in a closing prayer, written by John Birch. When our faith stands at the grave, grieving for a stone that's rolled away, forgive us. When our faith is short of understanding, though the truth is there to see, forgive us. When our faith, beset by doubt, 
sees no further than an empty tomb today, forgive us. Bring to mind the cry of Mary, I have seen the Lord, and grant us faith to believe. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. Hallelujah! Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Our final piece of music is from the Paul Murphy Band, who are based in Nesborough, North Yorkshire. The band came together after Paul put out a call at his local church to recruit some musicians. I hope this will have your feet tapping as we rejoice this Easter Sunday. <laughs> Everybody rabbit in Jesus' name, this train, this train, this train. 